the big red flag and say, well, if real rates are going up fast, gold tends to perform very poorly, but it hasn't. You know, it's held in there remarkably well given the speed and the, and the rate at which interest rates have, have risen. And I think now um, if central banks are going to cut rates again, which you know, they may well be forced to do, one or two things happen. Either gold goes higher because they're cutting rates again um, and currencies get further debased or inflation will return once they do cut rates and gold should perform well. Renowned investor Grant Williams recently shed light on the current investment landscape, observing a lack of significant shifts in portfolio allocations among generalist investors away from overvalued tech stocks and into commodities. However, Williams foresees an imminent surge of capital into precious metals, particularly gold and silver, suggesting that establishing positions in these assets with a long-term perspective appears to be a prudent move. Despite recent trends, gold prices have experienced a brief lull, hovering near three-week lows, as the demand for safe haven assets triggered by the conflict in the Middle East has somewhat tempered. Market participants eagerly anticipate insights from U.S. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell, seeking further clarity on the direction of interest rates. Williams highlighted potential catalysts that could drive gold's performance, such as central banks' rate cuts or the resurgence of inflation. He emphasizes the importance of consistently accumulating gold rather than hastily selling when its price surges. Drawing attention to the depreciating value of the dollar, the currency has lost over 96% of its value, attributing this to the Federal Reserve's practice of increasing the money supply without creating tangible value. Recently, gold prices surpassed the critical threshold of $2,000 per ounce, buoyed by escalating tensions in the Middle East, leading to a notable surge in demand for the precious metal. Williams further stressed the potential for a substantial appreciation in gold's price as more individuals recognize the necessity of holding physical gold as a safeguard against currency devaluation. Join us as we delve into insights shared by Grant Williams in his recent video. To stay updated with our latest uploads, subscribe to our channel and activate notifications. Thank you. Exposure to physical gold in their possession, not as an investment, but as an insurance policy, and um, what, what are both the main tailwinds and headwinds you currently see for gold? Um, yeah, look, I do. I'm, I've, I'm on the record for, for a long, long time. I'm, I've been a huge bull of gold for two decades now. Um, uh, not as a trade at all. You know, it's not something I, I, I trade myself. Uh, I own gold. I don't, I don't trade it. Um, and I continue to accumulate it because I think it's, it's the solution to an awful lot of problems. Um, and that, look, people get fixated with the two thousand dollar level, and they get fixated with is it going to go to two and a half thousand or five thousand? You know, as soon as you start thinking of something like gold in those terms, it, it changes the way you you view it. And to me, it's never been an asset whose price is that important. You know, and what's important for me personally with gold is is what it protects me against and what it preserves, which is my purchasing power. And that's that's really all I'm interested in you know i'm interested in having something that if uh you know if i if i put away enough gold to buy i don't know a small house today the house doubles in price i'm interested in my gold still being able to buy that house for me if i need it and, and over time gold does a phenomenal job of doing that i think there will be a spike in the price when a lot more people that they too need to have some physical uh, metal as as protection against currency debasement so i think you you will get um, a sharp appreciation in price. But again, you know, that's not, I, I won't be selling my gold because the price goes up. You know, I'll, I'll be exchanging my gold at some point for something that I want to own more when I think that gold is is perhaps overvalued or it's run its course or, 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 or it offers me an opportunity to, to say to exchange it for something I want more. So, I, you know, I think there are, there are an awful lot of tailwinds for gold now. Just looking at um, the political situation in the world, looking at what's going on in the Middle East, looking at um, the balance sheets of every single Western democracy, the corner that central banks are painted in. It's very, very difficult to find a negative data point for gold. You know, you could talk about real rates, and this would have been the big red flag. You say, well, if real rates are going up fast, gold tends to perform very poorly, but it hasn't. You know, it's held in there remarkably well, given the speed and the, and the rate at which interest rates have, have risen. And I think now 
um, if central banks are going to cut rates again, which you know, they may well be forced to do, one of two things happens. Either gold goes higher because they're cutting rates again um, and currencies get further debased, or inflation will return once they do cut rates. And gold should perform well um, in inflation. So again, you know, if you take the price out of the equation, and, and, I, don't, and I know to people that, a lot of people, that sounds like a foolish thing to say, and I, and I completely understand why they feel that way. For me, right now, I want to own more gold than I wanted to own in the last probably 10 years, since, well, probably since 2015. I wanted to own a lot of gold in 2015, but um, now I want to own more than I have really at any point in the last, in the last eight years. Um, and for me, it's not because I think it's going to 2,000, 2,500. It's because I think the damage being done elsewhere, gold is one of the only things that is going to, A, protect me from that, and B, remain liquid. Chance that things like real estate might protect you from this a bit. Um, but obviously, real estate is incredibly illiquid. Um, there are people who will argue Bitcoin will do the same thing and, you know, more power to them. I don't care about Bitcoin. It's not something that interests me in the slightest. Um, but I understand their argument for that. Uh, it's not tried and tested like gold is, but, um, you know, we've, we've seen it perform poorly in inflationary periods before, but I understand the argument. And, and for those people, you know, I wish them well. But for me right now, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm keen to own more gold rather than less. In the second quarter of 2023, gold miners' global average all-in sustaining cost, AISC, experienced a continued upward trajectory, reaching $1,315 per ounce. This indicates a quarterly increase of 1% and a year-on-year -year rise of 6%, extending the trend that initially emerged in the first quarter of 2021. Europe, in particular, witnessed the most significant surge in average AISC, soaring by 11% quarter-on-quarter to $1,167 per ounce. Meanwhile, North America recorded a 3% increase in average AISC, climbing to $1,523 per ounce. Oceania bucked the overall trend with a 3% quarterly decrease, leading to an average AISC of $1,139 per ounce. Amidst these developments, William emphasizes the potential of the precious metals sector for investors. However, he highlights the critical importance of adopting a cautious and meticulously researched approach to investment in this sector, aiming to mitigate potential risks and avoid substantial financial losses. Let's get back to the interview. I think precious metals are going to be a, a great place to, to put capital. Um, I think um, you, will, you will get some tremendous performance in the equities, but the caveat there is you can't just go and spray money into gold and silver mining companies. It's, a, it's an incredibly precise space and you really have to know what you're doing before you go and spray money into into companies you know the management team is is so crucial in uh, in these companies whether it's ex explorers or juniors or even the seniors you really have to know what you're doing and, and the, the there's no fever like gold fever as they say and what happens when you tend to get bull market these precious metals is every spruker in the world comes out with a with a story as to why you should invest in their mind and they're incredibly persuasive um, and people will get caught up in investing tens, if not hundreds of millions into projects that you know, are run by the wrong people in the wrong jurisdictions, and they'll lose money. It, it always happens every time in the cycle. But I think, um, I think finding people who understand that space and can invest on your behalf, you know, the rules of the world, um, people who really know these companies, um, it's a great place to put money to. You know, we're seeing things happen in the bond markets that we haven't seen happen in 50 years. So, so whichever way you look at it, that's incredibly significant. Um, yeah, there are a lot of people trying to catch falling knives in the bond market. Generally speaking, when you see that happening, it means we're nowhere near a bottom yet. You know, the, the bottoms happen when nobody wants to buy treasuries at the moment. Everybody who can fog a mirror is suggesting it's time to you know, nibble at treasury longs. And they might be right in the short term. But again, you know, I think the, you have to take a step back from the market action and stop focusing on the price and look at the chart of uh, treasuries or TLT, whichever one you want to look at, and look at the backdrop. You know, the backdrop is massive budget deficits for the US as far as the eye can see, deteriorating um, fiscal situation, and predictions from the, the Congressional Budget Office that suggest this is going to last, um, again, for the rest of this decade. And so, you know, it, it's, it's very easy to say, yeah, is there a trade here to buy bonds? And I would think there absolutely is. 
We've just come off a 40 year trending bond market, just quite strongly that the market is going to trend the other way. And that's not going to go the other way for 40 years because realistically it can't. You know, the world cannot sustain 40 years of rising rates. It's liable to trend in the other direction in a fairly short and sharp way because ultimately they'll have to do something to, 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 to get inflation under control. So there will be trading opportunities and tactical opportunities to be long bonds right now. But for me, um, I'm, I'm not a trader. I don't like to try and make short-term swing trades and, and things like this. I'd, I'd much rather ride the trend. And for me, the trend is, is higher for longer. Um, whilst the, the Fed have paused, I don't rule out them coming back and being forced to, to raise again. You know, the, the GDP number last week was hardly helpful to them if they want to stay where they are and, and maybe cut rates. So whilst I understand there's a lot of pressure to cut rates, I, I think they're very serious about getting inflation under control because inflation is a very big problem for not just central banks, but for governments who are about to enter an election cycle. So um, I, I think there is a trading opportunity here, but you have to be nimble and you have to realize it for what it is. You have to keep your stops tight and you have to be prepared to stop be stopped out. Um, I think the, the more sensible trade is to bet on higher rates for longer and position accordingly. Traders will start looking at economic data and potential actions from the U.S. Central Bank. Gold will react based on whatever the data is showing. Given the potential impact of economic data and the decisions of the U.S. Central Bank on the movement of gold, how might traders strategically position themselves in response to these developments in the near future? Share your thoughts in the comment section. If the video resonates with you, join our community by subscribing to our channel and enabling notifications with the bell icon. Thank you for being a part of our community.